Now what we're going to be using today is this. It's Stay Bright 8. And this is different from brazing. So brazing, you're getting this metal up to about 1200 degrees and you're actually using a silver or silphos rod and you're kind of fusing these two metals together. It gets really hot and you have to do a nitrogen flow. Otherwise you'll end up with like charring on the inside of the pipe, which we don't want. So that's the advantage to using a soft solder like this. This is specifically made for HVAC and Harris is who makes both of these. You can get this as a package. You have to put this on before you do any soldering. And this is a flux that keeps the line clean as you're soldering and um, it will make sure that you have a good penetration. Now this, from what people have said, is far superior than brazing because it's supposed to be stronger and it also prevents you from having to do any sort of nitrogen flow. We'll still do a nitrogen uh, pressure test, but this is gonna prevent us from having to do the steps of having a nitrogen flow. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these lines out and we're just gonna clean off both surfaces with emery cloth or sandpaper, make sure it's good and clean. And then we're going to apply our stay clean on both of these, wrap our valves with a wet rag and then we'll go ahead and make these connections. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and deburr, deburr these lines. We wanna kinda make sure it's at a little bit of an angle so that all that stuff can come out. Okay, so that one is perfect. I'm going to do the same on this guy. All right. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and wrap our valves with this wet rag. I'm gonna start using um, the heat block. It's called wet rag. I think Mikey Pipes uses that and I'm gonna try it out because he, he seems to have pretty good success with it. All right, and now we're just gonna take our stay clean. And I've heard that you don't wanna put um, flux on the female side over here because it can actually get into the lines. So I'm just gonna be doing it on the male end. And then we're just gonna feed it in. And you also wanna make sure that your, your pipes are going in perfectly straight because if they're not, it can make a gap. And apparently the solder does not like gaps. It, it can't fill in like really big gaps. All right. So we're gonna start up our torch now and uh, you'll see how quickly we can do this. Um, we don't have to get this pipe very hot and this Stay Bright 8 will just melt into that joint real easy. nitrogen so we're just gonna let that dry organically and then 
we're gonna check with our mirror, go all the way around and make sure that everything is sealed up nice. Another advantage is right here. If you had dropped a brazing uh, blob of braze or uh, silphos, this would go straight through that plastic, whereas this will leave nothing. So it's pretty fantastic. So as you can see, good all the way around. Got a little blob on the liquid line, but that's okay. As long as everything's sealed up. So we'll go ahead and do our pressure test now. We'll throw about 300 PSI in it and make sure that it stays for at least 30 minutes or so, and then we can go ahead and pull our vacuum. So this is what will happen when you do not use a nitrogen flow. As you can see, there's this gray soot, and you can literally wipe it off with your hand, but that also stays on the inside of your pipe as well. And that's the last thing you want because you can have TXV problems, um, so the Stay Bright 8 is an awesome alternative. Less tools you have to bring on site and the same result, you get a nice clean solder and uh, you don't have to worry about the nitrogen flow. So it's really nice to have. So real quick, we're gonna do another demonstration on using the Stay Bright 8 for this coupler. Now, a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. You can put flux inside of here just be very careful on how much flux you put in. You don't wanna glob it in there and then when you shove this in to have a bunch on the inside of the pipe here. So I would put a very minimal amount on the female end and put most of it on the male end. Now you wanna make sure this is good and clean. Otherwise, if you have any contaminants on this joint, it's not going to go well. Now another thing is if you swage this yourself, you more than likely will have not a 100% circular opening and you could end up with maybe a little bit of a gap like that um, and it's not gonna be as tight as using a fitting. And so what you need to do in that scenario is you can take a pair of pliers and just kind of pinch this around and make sure that it's flat. Another thing I've heard that people have done is they'll take an old um, pipe cutter and they'll take the wheel out and they'll put something flat in there like a penny drill a hole in a penny or something and run this around that way it's not cutting into the pipe it'll indent the pipe which is fine uh, it doesn't matter as long as you're not cutting into it and it'll make sure to take out all of those little gaps so we've got this one cleaned up I'm gonna show you how much heat you need to put on this in order to uh, solder it if you get this too hot, it's not going to be good. Um, so you just wanna get enough heat to where your silver solder will melt and then you're good to go. We're also going to be using map gas on this. So we're not gonna be using any special tanks. This is all that we're gonna be using to solder this line. So for all of you DIYers who want to do this without buying acetylene tanks and things of that nature, um, this is a great alternative. So let's get this cleaned up, put our flux on, and let's get to soldering. Okay, so we're gonna put our flux on, majority on the male side. We're gonna take a little bit and we're gonna put it on the inside. But again, not much at all. And when you go to slide this in, you can uh, rotate it, making sure that that flux is all mixed in on the inside. All right, so the technique here is we're gonna be heating up where we want this silver solder to go. So we want this to be pulled into this fitting here. So we're gonna be heating up both of these simultaneously, but while I'm doing this, you'll notice that I'll start to heat this side which will, capillary action will pull that silver solder into that opening. It's 
see that melt pretty instantly. Again, this is not going to take that much heat. And it is literally as easy as that, folks. I can grab this pipe probably six inches from where we just did this, and I'm not burning myself. Now I'll try and get you as close as possible here, but you can see all the way around this pipe is completely sealed. We have really nice coverage through the whole pipe. Now, what we'll also do is I'm gonna cut this in half, right past where our solder is, and I'm gonna see how far that silver solder traveled. Let's go ahead and do that. How well you can see that, but right here we can see silver all the way in up here. So that silver solder pulled all the way up into here, which is fantastic. And on the other end, we can see that silver right there. So it sucked it all the way clear to the end of the fitting, which is amazing. Really, really nice um, coverage. And there is no doubt in my mind that this joint would have lasted 30 plus years um, and all we did was use a map gas regular tank, no special tanks, and no nitrogen flow. As you can see on the inside of the pipe, there's zero of that black soot that we showed previously in the video. I'm just getting into using this method using StayBright 8, and so far I've just been blown away. As you could see, um, there's zero soot on the inside, we hardly heated up this pipe in order to do our soft solder, and we had really nice coverage, even clear up to the end of our fitting, which is really nice. Also, not having to carry around a bunch of tanks, this is literally all we used. Map gas runs a little bit hotter, so it's preferred over propane, and really compact with the silver solder. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, even if you are in this trade, you're looking at alternatives to, uh, to brazing because the temperature is a lot higher. You have to have a nitrogen flow. Or if you're in the other boat, you're a DIYer, this is amazing. And if I was a DIYer, this would just be a real breakthrough in being able to do this project myself. If you're interested in checking out some other AC installs that we've done, check out this playlist and I'm sure you'll enjoy what you find. We'll see you guys on the next one, later.